All right, guys and gals, uh, I'm going to make a quick video here showing how a portable executable file can hide stuff in areas other than the code area. Or basically what it can do is, is it can take code or it can take another executable file and hide it inside of the resources section, which is made for like images and resources, not for executable files, but it's possible to do so. And I apologize for the background noise. Literally, right after I started this video, now there's like three lawnmowers. Sounds like they started up outside the window, of course. Of course. So, um, um, the file I'm going to be working on is an example file. It is from the book Practical Malware Analysis. Just keeping it simple here because I'm working through the book right now anyway. And so it is called Lab 11 1. So if you have the book, um, it's from Chapter 11. And I'll, I'll give you an, a couple little demonstrations here. So the first thing I'm going to do is run it through PE Studio. And what PE Studio does is it tells us, it does like an, a, a little analysis on this thing, static analysis of the strings, and it runs it through Virus Total, which is the website that is sort of like the central hub for malware analysts and virus, antivirus and stuff. So what we have here is it takes the Strings that it thinks are the most likely to be malicious, and it puts them up top in this blacklisted area. And then the rest of them go down here, they're just kind of like garbage. And a lot of these strings are going to be function imports. As you can see here, these are just a bunch of Win API functions. So a lot of these will actually be duplicated in the um, import section. You can see there's 53 here. So not all of them, but a lot of them. We'll see them in there as well. So this can give you um, the general idea of what this program is capable of doing. So anyways, um, so if we go to the re resource section here, we'll see there's a resource that's binary. It's called TGAD. And um, it actually, see this Resort or uh, PE Studio actually gives us a little heads up here because it tells us that it's an executable. And uh, but even if you didn't have this information that it's an executable and you just saw a resource, um, one indicator is the size here too. It's um, but let's see if it mentions. Yeah, see, it even mentions in the indicators segment here. Because what the indicator segment does, it basically gives you a summary of, like, the general idea of why this program is being flagged as possibly bad. And you can see it says that it modifies the registry. Uh, <laughs> this is a pretty good indicator that it, it was picked up by 40 out of 56 uh, security suite malware, anti-malware programs and um, that it embeds this file here. So the question may be, how do you, like, what do you, where do you really go from here in terms of how you actually figure this thing out, right? Well, I'll show you an example here that if I open this up in IDA, it's not immediately apparent, to me at least, because I'm a newbie. Um, it's not immediately, like, figure outable because so I'll, oh yeah let me let me go back to uh i'll go to i'll go back to pe studio work because i want to show you one more thing what, what i wanted to show you was if you go to strings down here in here see all these wlx active user shell wlx disconnect notify all this stuff so these are um this they're part of this uh gina API, which basically allows programs to mess with login credentials on Windows in a nutshell. 
um, go to chapter 11 of practical malware analysis to read out more information about that. I actually, uh, I did an analysis on this file already in my last video on um, liveedu.tv. So if you go follow me there, then you can see that. But the point I'm trying to make here is that, so these, these functions here are clearly um, API calls. But if you then go into IDA, you won't see them. Even though, like, even in the strings window, I don't think, I don't even think that they appear. We got, yeah, we got TGAD. Terrible. Figure. Sorry about that. But we got TGAD, we got binary, which, <laughs> I mean, don't count on that being usual. But we don't even have, yeah, we don't even have those. And if you go to the names window, I don't really see them here either. So it's kind of confusing because it's like, okay, so strings is clearly picking up these calls, but they're nowhere to be found in here, like the other functions and stuff. See, if you go to functions here, same thing here as well. So the question then becomes, where are those things, right? And if you even look at the this graph here, which is what I did extensively in the other video, um, you know, I kind of followed the execution path, and it still wasn't really. I mean, it, it was is it was obvious to see what was going on, but if you go and you open up the pro when you see a, a resource like that that is probably an executable file being embedded. What you can do is use this thing called resource hacker, um, which I already actually have open, but if you didn't have it, you could go and get it, just Google it, but it's literally called resource hacker. And it has this RH logo, yellow RH logo right there. So I opened it up in resource hacker and then it's like immediately apparent what's going on because I opened up the uh, lab 111.exec and it Lo and behold, it has one resource called PGAD. And then you can see here the MZ. This MZ is indicative of a DOS header, which is the uh, bytes 4D5A. And then um, this, this program cannot be run in DOS mode, which is another indication of DOS header. And then you have your segments and everything down here. And um, yeah, this is a this is a portable executable file, and then down here you can see this is where the strings came from. So the uh, PE Studio found the strings because it searched through the resources as well, whereas Ida apparently didn't do that by default. I'm sure you can set it up to do that. Ida can do a lot of crazy stuff, and I am by no means an expert. I'm actually a newbie, but this is sort of um, resource hacking 101 i guess you could say um like that's the first thing you can do if you, if you see something like if you, if you know that a file does not look encrypted or packed and you can't seem to locate some code like that then you might want to check the resource section and do this use this resource hacker tool it's pretty useful so that's what i wanted to show you today and um, i'm going to keep making little videos on different little things in malware analysis. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.